muscle weakness, fatigue, obesity, heart issues, just some of the most serious conditions tied to poor metabolic health. And often the treatments rely on intense exercise that's not feasible for everyone or drugs with limited effects and risks. Can we approach this in a new way to not only mimic the benefits of exercise like boosted energy and fat burn, but also enhance muscles, heart, and brain health without the intense workouts? Well, with the discovery of SLUPP332, many researchers in metabolism and longevity are thinking so. This powerful compound activates key receptors to replicate exercise. It works by targeting receptors to ramp up mitochondrial function and energy use. This isn't just science, it's a revolution in metabolic health. Join the quest for effortless vitality. Let's take a deep dive into SLUPP332 where I'll share all my research and discoveries on this compound. Before I continue with this video, I must start off with a disclaimer that all the information in this video is for purely educational and entertainment reasons. That I'm not a doctor and for any health concerns or questions you may have, please seek out a licensed doctor or physician. By watching this video, you agree to the terms and let's get straight into this video. So what is SLUPP332? It's a compound that activates estrogen related receptors to mimic exercise leading to better mitochondrial function, more energy, and fat burn. Additionally, it's being studied in other areas besides just metabolic health because this compound has been shown to have other protective benefits such as helping with the heart, the brain, and other things related to longevity. So how does SLUPP332 work? It works by binding to estrogen-related receptors ERRA and ERRY in the nucleus and these receptors are related to gene expression and energy and metabolism and when i see estrogen related receptors many of you might be thinking about estrogen i know i did when i first started doing my research but it's important to note that estrogen related receptors has nothing to do with estrogen receptors estrogen related receptors especially in this contact plays a major role in cells energy from using energy from burning fat and from feeling stronger it has nothing to do with the estrogen hormone so to clear that up so it's an estrogen related receptor binder and since it works on the genes in the nucleus for better energy and better metabolism this enhances the mitochondria to first make new mitochondria to enhance your current mitochondria and as well to reduce oxidative stress pretty much what it's doing is it's making your mitochondria stronger it's making new ones and additionally it's also helping clean up the cell and because the cell now has better mitochondria and it's cleaner, this leads to more energy production, burning fat, and as well, more endurance. And additionally, it leads to better cell recycling. So pretty much what happens when you exercise. But now it's just this compound working on the genes and the nucleus to create this. So in summary, SLUPP332 binds to estrogen related receptors inside the nucleus and these help with the gene expression of energy and metabolism, which then that allows the cell to create more mitochondria and to have stronger mitochondria. And additionally, it helps with the cell to clean out waste and to recycle. And this then allows the body to burn more energy, to have more endurance, have better muscles, which all happens when you work out, which is why this peptide says to mimic exercise. So now let's talk about the research benefits. It supports mitochondria health, leading to more energy and more endurance. It increases the metabolism, leading to fat loss. It improves muscle strength, recovery, and endurance. And has shown to have protective and regenerative effects on the heart, the kidney, and the brain, which all these benefits happen when you exercise. Now let's go into cautions and counterindications, starting off with cautions. And the most common one I've seen is increase in heart rate and trouble sleeping, which makes sense. So at higher doses, I can see it increasing heart rate and as well affecting sleep if taken too close to bed or if the individual is hypersensitive. And then for counterindications for my research is any pregnant individuals and or individuals with uncontrolled heart rates. Now let's go into dosing and cycling. And for my research, I've seen anywhere from 100 micrograms to 2000 micrograms. And you're probably thinking that is a huge range, which I'll explain here in a second. For cycling, I've seen anywhere from four to 12 weeks on with four to 12 weeks off. 
and it's ideally take this in the morning to prevent any sleep disturbances. And then going back to the range of dosing and cycling because it's pretty large and the reason why is that this compound is small, meaning that it can be used in many forms such as injecting, oral, nasal, but each of those forms have different absorption rates. So for example, injecting 100 micrograms is much different than taking it orally. There's a much higher absorption rate with injecting. So depending on the administration, more or less may be needed. So to summarize this quickly, 100 to 2,000 micrograms per dose. Nasal, 300 to 1,000 micrograms per dose. Oral, 500 to 2,000 micrograms per dose. Injecting 100 to 500 micrograms per dose, ideally done in the morning to disrupt sleep, four to 12 weeks on and four to 12 weeks off. Now let's go into other peptides to stack with SLUPP332. First would be some kind of GLP, semiglutide, tizer peptide, rataturide, carglinotide. All those can work very well with SLUPP332 because they work on different parts when it comes to metabolic health and weight loss and together can be a very strong synergy. Next would be tesofensin, which is just another great peptide that helps target weight loss but in a different way than SLUPP332. Next would be 5-amino-1-MQ, which again, it helps increase metabolic health and weight loss but in a different way than SLUPP332, so together it can be very powerful. Next would be some kind of healing recovery peptides with BPC, TP500, GHKCU, KPV, and the reason why really depends on the researcher's goal. Because one thing about this peptide which makes it so useful is that it gives exercise benefits without exercising. So in my mind, let's say an individual has an injury that's preventing them from working out. So they use SLPP332 to still exercise and they use the recovery peptides to recover faster so that they can resume normal exercise as fast as possible. And on top of it, all these recovery peptides have multiple benefits. Next would be some kind of growth hormone peptides such as CJC1285 or tesmorelin with ipimorelin. This combination is amazing for more growth hormone, which that helps burn fat, build muscle, it's the hormone of vitality. And last would be adding more mitochondrial peptides such as MOTC, SS31, or humanin. All these peptides do enhance mitochondrial health in different ways, so together it could be very powerful. Now let's go into supplements I would stack with SLUPP332. First would be some kind of functional protein, so I'm thinking collagen peptides or bone broth protein as protein is critical for metabolism and these are the best proteins in my opinion that reduce inflammation and are really easy to digest. Next would be creatine, it's amazing for so many different things and definitely a supplement to add in. Next would be NAD and glutathione. I'm a big fan of the supplements as they help with numerous parts of the body and overall can complement pretty much every different peptide cycle. Next would be some kind of bitters, which are just herbs that help reduce blood sugar because I'm thinking that most individuals use this peptide for weight loss or metabolic control and bitters before meals can be a great natural way just to enhance that effect. And last would be a animal organ complex. I'm a big fan of different organs and together they can greatly increase metabolic health. Now let's go into lifestyle tools I would add. Starting off with the most important, which is sun and sleep. Those two can do amazing things for your mitochondrial health, especially if you can't exercise right now. Getting those two things down are huge. Next would be a raw animal-based diet. I'm a big fan of that. So good organs, good meats, raw milk, raw honey, some fresh fruits can do wonders for your metabolism. Next would be functional training, which is the only training I do. And in my opinion, no matter who you are, you have an injury or you can't do something, you can do functional training. And not only will it build muscle, but it'll make you pain free. And I believe it's the best way to exercise. Next would be body work such as acupuncture, chiropractic, massage. All those can do wonders for not only healing the body, but enhancing the body and enhancing the metabolism. Next would be hot and cold therapies. It doesn't have to be extreme. It could be infrared sauna and a cool bath or more extreme if you want, but this, this is an amazing way to give the body a workout without actually moving the body and has many other benefits. And lastly would be some kind of oxygen therapy as I think oxygen just has so many different benefits. But as you can see, all these lifestyle tools can be beneficial if someone can't really move. You know, let's say you can't even do functional training. If you just slept well, had good sunlight, good nutrition, did an infrared sauna, you're already putting your body in such a metabolic workout without causing stress on the body. So let's go into the pros of SLUPP332. 
First, it mimics exercise without exercise, and on top of it has other protective effects such as helping with the kidney, the heart, and the brain. Another pro is that it's a small molecule allowing it to be administrated in different forms from sub-Q, nasal, and oral. Now let's go into the cons of SLUPP332. And the biggest con is that there's a lot of unknown about this compound. It's a very new compound. And we don't know much about the long-term implications. So what is my overall opinion of SLUPP332? I think it's very fascinating and just from reading around and subjective experiences, it seems very effective. Not only does it help mimic exercise, but has other protective things such as helping with the heart, the brain, and the kidney, which is really exciting. So it's really cool how we're seeing more and more compounds come out to aid in weight loss, but it's also super important to not become reliant on these things and to actually exercise and take care of your health. But together they can synergize, which I'm all about using natural stuff with a more advanced cutting edge things. But personally, I would use this peptide in shorter cycles, four to eight weeks. And then my off cycles use a different peptide because now we have so many different peptides that can still hit that main benefit. Let's say it's burning fat or having more energy or having this better metabolic health. There's so many other peptides that can still hit that goal that works on the body in a different mechanism. So I think by switching peptides, not only will you be able to first see which peptides work best for you, but at the same time, hit it in different ways. And I think overall, they'll have the highest synergy effect and give the best results. But anyways, that is my opinion on this peptide. There's still a lot more research I need to do, a lot more experiments, but I'm excited about it. It's really cool to see how this field's evolving. But if you want more, you can either check out my books on Amazon, they're amazing, really easy way to get more peptide information in a nice, concise way and to support this channel. And if you want even more, check out my Peptide Academy VIP. I'll be in there answering questions, building it, got lots of exciting things for you. But anyways, thank you for watching. Have an amazing day and stick around for future videos.